I have been playing with my Librem 5 lately, and I have to tell you that it's very close to being usable as my daily driver now. It can do most of the things that you would expect a, a modern smartphone to do. You can install apps, you can call, you can text. I can stream from my Plex server to my Librem 5 over Bluetooth. That makes me very happy. That's pretty much what I want out of a phone. So when I say that the Librem 5 is almost what I want it to be, well, now you understand what I'm talking about. Most of the major things that I need are actually there already. But this video is about things that are holding me back from using it as a daily driver. So what are those problems and why do I feel like I can't use my Librem 5 yet? Let's talk about this. And before we get into the, the, the real meat of the video, if you like this video, maybe hit that like button. It really helps us out. You can also hit that subscribe button if that's more your speed. Number five, we need an OS wide password manager. Now at the moment, I'm not exactly sure how useful an OS wide password manager would be since there really aren't that many branded uh, first party applications on the Libre 5. Most of them are, you know, uh, GNOME applications. So the need for a password manager for the apps that you install, probably not as great or as pressing as they would be on something like Android. And as it stands for me right now, you know, you can actually log into Firefox Lockwise through Epiphany uh, or through Firefox or both and synchronize your passwords back and forth uh, because right now the browser situation is kind of weird and we'll get to that in a minute. And Firefox Lockwise is fine for non-critical passwords, but I'm not going to be storing uh, my, my most precious uh, account data <laughs> in, in Firefox Lockwise, I'm just not gonna do it. If you take your security seriously, uh, you need something better, something like Nextcloud Passwords, which is fine. You know, it's, it's a step up from Lockwise. But the problem with Nextcloud Passwords is that, well, uh, the browser extension is buggy as hell and doesn't seem to work uh, at all like it should. So there's also Bitwarden, and Bitwarden is great, uh, but it's also kind of a pain in the ass to manage for yourself. What I want is for a native password manager to be able to tie into something like Lockwise or Nextcloud Passwords or Bitwarden or all three of them, ideally, and to be able to suggest uh, usernames and passwords when uh, you go to log into an app or service. I mean, I'm already signed into my Nextcloud account through uh, GNOME's online accounts uh, settings panel, and I don't see any reason why Nextcloud Passwords shouldn't auto suggest here. You know, you also have to sign into the GNOME key ring at this point, you know, when you first log into the phone. So why not use the GNOME key ring or something like it to manage your passwords uh, in your Nextcloud passwords account or your Bitwarden account or any of the above. Now, maybe that's something that I should take up with GNOME. Um, that would be cool if GNOME could integrate something like that in the future. But the thing is, it's a critical feature like having a password manager, if you take your, uh, if you take your privacy and security seriously, you need to have a password manager. And the fact that there isn't really a great option right now, um, unless you want to manually move a key pass database between your Librem 5 and your desktop, uh, that kind of sucks. <laughs> I could be missing something though. Let me know uh, if there is a good option for this already. I just haven't seen it. Number four, make Firefox actually usable as a mobile browser. On my desktop, I spend most of my time in a web browser. The problem is on the Librem 5, well, <laughs> the web browser situation is a little uh, screwy. Performance isn't great in either of the web browsers that are available and Firefox out of the box just isn't quite there yet. <laughs> While something like Epiphany can actually render web pages in their mobile uh, style, um, Firefox just doesn't most of the time. And don't get me wrong, it is awesome that you can use desktop Firefox on your phone. That is super cool. Uh, and that's really handy when you dock the Librem 5 and put it, you know, and maximize Firefox on your screen. But it is just not usable in its current state as a touchscreen first uh, browser, especially when just about every web page opens up thinking it's in desktop mode. That's just not acceptable. And the problem, the thing that kind of blows my mind about all of this is that Firefox, when you're in like the inspector tool, when you're debugging, Firefox really does have a great 
uh, touch simulation mode. Like, you, you know, it, it simulates being a mobile device really well. So why then is that not enabled here? Even if it means forking Firefox and, and enabling these kind of things and adding a few minor tweaks for the Librem 5, I am all for that. But it's not just like regular websites that are having issues. It's also the uh, the settings pages, the about pages in Firefox that don't show up properly here. It's the extension page, the settings page, the password page, they they all need to work on mobile. And right now they don't. Number three, we need more applications formatted for the phone's display. As it stands right now, the Librem 5 really does have a great selection of apps. Um, you can go into you know, the, the Pure OS store and it'll show you with a little badge if the app was gonna work for your device without being in desktop mode. And that's pretty cool because that means you can load the app up onto your phone and you can launch it and use it with nothing but the touch screen and the on-screen display. And that's really awesome. That's what you need from a phone. However, if the application doesn't have something like LibHandy uh, implemented, then you're gonna have a bad time. That's not to say that the app won't function. I mean, it definitely will. It's compiled for the device and it'll work. If you can install it on the Librem 5, it should function. But a lot of the GNOME uh, apps, GTK apps in general, are gonna be formatted for a desktop. They expect to be used with a mouse and a keyboard uh, and be displayed on a screen with a minimum resolution of like 720p, for example. And while it is a killer feature to be able to dock your Librem 5 and run any desktop software, at least open source that's been compiled for the device on it, that, I mean, that's really cool, right? The problem is a lot of the time, if you want to do something, uh, and you don't have the application formatted for your device, then you need to have a mouse and keyboard and screen and dock around. Um, and that kind of sucks. A random example, I actually wanted to see what uh, Adwita Dark would look like uh, with this device. And I know that dark mode GNOME is sacrilege, uh, but I wanted to see it. Most of the time when I use my phone, I'm using it at night. Uh, I'm done with what I'm doing on the computer. Uh, I've retired for the evening and I'll go use my phone. And uh, I've been playing around with the Librem 5 in the dark a lot of the time. And uh, bright mode Adwita actually has been uh, killing my eyes. So I tried to enable it. So I installed GNOME Tweaks and I opened it up. And what do you know, it's not formatted for the display. So you have like the menu on the left and it's taking up three quarters of the screen. And then you see like a couple of labels uh, and then all of the actual uh, settings are far off the screen. You can't access them. So I ended up uh, actually docking the Librem 5 and I was able to change the setting using a mouse and keyboard on a monitor. And thankfully that's one of the uh, settings that you can just set and forget, right? But if you have other applications that you need to access and that aren't formatted for uh, the Librem 5's screen, well then it just isn't a great experience. It means that you need to have a mouse, keyboard, dock, and monitor handy in order to use the device or the applications that you want to use, and it's not great. At this point, I mean, it really is just a matter of time uh, before, you know, Purism or, uh, you know, the d apps maintainer integrates lib handy into it, but I don't think that it should be up to Purism uh, to, to port over all these applications or to add lib handy to all these applications. At this point, it's really just a matter of time. And you know, if I had the expertise, it, the GTK experience, I would probably try to do it myself. But at the moment, I don't. So let's move on. Number two, the on-screen keyboard. This is one of my biggest complaints about the Librem 5. Um, the on-screen keyboard is serviceable, it works. Now you have to be rather deliberate with your key presses in order for uh, you to, to be able to type anything accurately. And even then there seem to be a lot of mistypes. Now maybe I'm spoiled by Android's on-screen keyboard, but it, I feel like I'm twice as accurate with Android's uh, OSK than with the Librem 5s. The other thing with uh, the Pure OS on-screen keyboard is that it doesn't pop up. It doesn't offer itself to you reliably. If you enter focus into a text field, it doesn't pop up every time. And sometimes it'll take a couple of uh, refocuses, like to you tap out of the input field and then tap back into it and then tap out and tap back in until the uh, 
the keyboard gets the hint that you want to use it. Now, there is a little button down at the bottom right uh, corner of the screen that will activate the uh, on-screen keyboard, but it's a little bit obnoxious when, you know, there's a, a modal dialogue that pops up and it blocks your access to the button and you need to type something in, like, for example, a password. Uh, it gets a little obnoxious. But there is a feature that is missing, and I've talked about this before, gesture typing. Gesture typing is incredible. I love gesture typing. I know that it's kind of niche, but like I can type on my phone with one hand, not looking at it. And I'm a hundred percent accurate. I can just do, 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 do. I can just be over here. I could not look and just type something out and it's fine. Like I can type one handed, not looking at the screen. Uh, gesture typing is incredibly important to me and it's not here. I find myself using the Librem five uh, not even thinking about it and trying to gesture type and it doesn't do anything because it's not implemented. I, and again, I know that it's a niche concern of mine uh, and I, because uh, I've rarely ever seen anyone else out in public ever use gesture typing, but it's a feature that I really miss coming from Android and using, uh, using the Librem 5, it makes it much more difficult. But it's not all criticism of the Librem 5 uh, on-screen keyboard. I love the mode switching that's available here, being able to switch into terminal mode and having like the arrow keys tab and all of those other uh, awesome keys, the function keys. Oh boy, do I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> Plus emojis. Uh, I love emojis. So yeah, that's pretty sick. Okay, number one. Number one. Are you ready for this? Battery life. Battery life. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There is no sugarcoating it. With the OS version that I'm currently running, uh, the Librem 5 lasts no more than four hours with the screen on. Uh, and that's generous. Maybe five or six with the screen off. Now, those are numbers with the modem and the Wi Fi and Bluetooth enabled. I haven't really tested it without uh, those things enabled. Here's the thing. Those are actually pretty good numbers compared to what it was when I got my hands on like the prototypes. When I met with Todd, uh, I saw the Librem 5 and I think the battery discharged in like an hour and 25 minutes. So things have significantly improved since then. But four hours with the screen on is still pretty bad. Unless I want to top the battery up every few hours and I really don't. Uh, it's basically unusable at, at, with four hours. I mean, even with, with the screen off, five or six hours is pretty bad. And I'm not saying this as criticism, like you guys are doing a terrible job. They're doing a great job improving uh, the efficiency of the software and improving the battery life. Uh, and I have no doubt that within a couple of months or maybe a year, we'll see seven or maybe eight hours of battery life with this thing, which is closer to usable. But I would still want to see more when my current daily driver lasts 11, 12, 13 hours. I mean, I've been spoiled by Android. I mean, a lot of us have. Uh, but what I want to see is the Librem 5 be able to compete um, against something like an Android device. Well, that was a lot of criticism. Uh, and I criticize things that I love because I love the Librem 5. I think that it's awesome and I can't wait for it to be able to be used as my daily driver. I want to be able to take this device with me wherever I go and to use it to do the things that I expect to be able to do with my device. Until the problems here have been addressed, I don't really feel like I can, and that sucks. But they are moving forward and they are making progress. I, where they are now compared to where they were a couple of years ago is just incredible to have been able to personally witness. And uh, I love the Librem 5. Uh, I can't wait for, uh, you know, next year or so to see where they're at. But I'd like to know what you think. Do you have a Librem 5? Let me know down in the comments. Are you using it as your daily driver yet? I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. If you don't have a Librem 5, what's keeping you from jumping in? I, I would love to hear that as well. I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here as always. Thank you to my patrons who make what I do possible. Uh, it's because of them and my YouTube members as well that I'm able to uh, make these videos for you guys. Uh, but I think that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.